And welcome back to the Yes Longevity Podcast, where we give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Thank you for joining me today on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in Burlington, Connecticut. We've only got a couple things for you as far as housekeeping. Number one, we are into the third week of our Fit and 42 uh, program. Um, so after the first two weeks, we've got one woman who has made over a 10-pound change in fat loss and muscle gain in just two weeks so that's awesome job by her and we have our metabolism makeover challenge coming up um, it starts October 28th we have a kickoff on October 21st so if you feel like you're sluggish you're tired all the time you don't have a whole lot of energy you feel like maybe your clothes aren't fitting well or you're trying to find a way to actually find an eating pattern and an exercise pattern that you can maintain for the long time term metabolism it goes right for you so we have a kickoff on Monday October 21st at 6 p.m. And then the program actually starts on the 28th. So if you're interested, give us a call at 860-673-4293. Or stop by and see us. Message us on Facebook for some information. And uh, we can get you started on that. So those are our two housekeeping items for today. So what does coffee, vegetarian, and cookies all have in common? I'm wondering, I'm sure. What they all have in common is that today is their national day. So today is National Coffee Day, it is National Vegetarian Day, and it is also National Cookie Day. So I thought that I would bunch them all together and um, see if we can talk a little about each one and talk a little bit about how each one of these things can actually affect your longevity. So I'm going to start off with coffee. Um, just happen to have a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup. No, I did not go to Dunkin' Donuts. It's rare that I go to Dunkin' Donuts. I don't care for the taste of coffee, although if I did like the taste of coffee, I would drink it because there are a lot of health benefits. Um, I just, they say you can acquire a taste for it. I never really tried hard way back on uh, a Sunday morning after being hungover or my early 20s, someone gave me a cup of coffee to get me ready to start a football game in a couple hours to wake me up some and I uh, just basically, pardon me, but I just spit it out. It was disgusting. And uh, so I've never drank it since. I don't like coffee flavored candies, coffee ice cream, just the flavor of coffee doesn't work for me. But sometimes I wish I could get over it because there are some real benefits to drinking coffee. So I'm going to go over some of those benefits for you. So I know it goes back and forth uh, about the whether coffee is good for you, it's not good for you, good for you, not good for you. So I'm going to give you some reasons why I believe that it's good for you. So number one, it can improve your energy level and make you smarter. There you go. I should be starting to drink more coffee. So the coffee blocks or an inhibitory transmitter in your brain, which causes uh, a stimulant effect. So this improves your energy level your mood and various aspects of brain function. So uh, maybe I should begin to drink coffee to get a little bit smarter. Number two, it can help you burn fat. Caffeine is found in almost every commercial fat burning supplement and for good reason. It's one of the few natural substances proven to aid in fat burning. There are several studies that show that caffeine can boost your met met metabolic rate as much as 3 to 11 percent. And other studies have indicated that caffeine can specifically increase fat burning by as much as 10 percent in obese individuals and 29 percent in lean people. But I don't think that you need to make coffee your number one go-to fat burning uh, uh, strategy because it's possible that these effects diminish over the long term for coffee drinkers. So it might only happen if you just start to drink it, but over time your body gets acclimated to it like it does in a lot of things. So that's number two. Number three, it can drastically improve your physical performance. So it can improve performance. Caffeine can increase adrenaline, adrenaline levels and it releases fatty tissues from your fat tissues and it can lead to an in, 
a, a significant increase in physical performance, as much as 11 to 12 percent on average. So therefore, sometimes it might make sense to grab a little cup of coffee in half an hour or so before you come to the coaching center. It might help your performance a little bit. Certainly in the morning, it might help wake you up some. Coffee contains essential nutrients. Some very, several important nutrients, including stuff like riboflavins, potassium, magnesium, nice, and just to name a few, has some essential nutrients. So you want to have some coffee to get some of those nutrients in your diet each day. Coffee may actually lower your risk for type 2 diabetes. There's been several observational observatory type studies that show that coffee drinkers have a much lower risk for type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes is a serious condition that affects millions of people around the world. So we need to start drinking some more coffee. It may protect you from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So coffee drinkers have a much lower risk for getting Alzheimer's disease, which is the leading cause for dementia worldwide. So there's a good reason to drink coffee. You want to get that blood flowing up through that brain, and uh, it may actually help reduce your risk for dementia. It may also lower your risk for Parkinson's disease. Coffee drinkers have up to a 60% lower risk of getting Parkinson's disease. disease. Parkinson's is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder. So there you go. We help you get, keep from getting Parkinson's. It may also help protect your liver. Coffee drinkers, particularly people who drink four or more cups per day, have up to an 80%, 80% lower risk of having um, um, cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver, which can be caused by several diseases. So four cups a day may actually protect your liver some. So something to think about there. Coffee can fight depression and it can make you happier. Depression is a serious mental disorder that causes a significantly reduced quality of life. It's very common. It's about 4% of the people in the United States currently meet the criteria for clinical depression. In fact, in a Harvard study published in 2011, women who drank four or more cups of coffee per day had a 20% lower risk for, for being depressed. And in another study of over 200,000 individuals, they found that those people who drank four or more cups per day had a 53% or less likely to die of suicide. So, press is a big thing around the world and in our country. Coffee seems to help with that. Coffee may lower your risk for certain cancers. Yes, this cup of coffee may help lower your risk for cancer. Um, liver, uh, colon, rectal cancers are the third and fourth leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Coffee drinkers have a lower risk of both, up to 40% lower risk for liver cancer. And in one study of over like almost 500,000 people, they found that those who drank four or five cups of coffee per day were 15% lower risk for colorectal cancer. So it may help fight off cancer. And one thing to think about, coffee does not cause heart disease and it may lower your risk for stroke. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons why you want to drink some coffee. And one of the thing to think about is that coffee may cause a mild increase in blood pressure, although that will diminish over time. Those people who are hypertensive may think about limiting the amount of coffee that they drink because they don't want that spike in their blood pressure. Coffee, believe it or not, is the biggest source of antioxidants in their Western diet. The number one source of antioxidants in Western diet, that cup of coffee you're having every single morning. And finally, the most important thing, which we love to talk about here on our longevity podcast is, coffee may help you live longer. Given that coffee drinkers are less likely to get many diseases, it makes sense that coffee could help you live longer. 
in two very, very large studies, drinking coffee was associated with a 20% reduction or risk of death in men and a 26% disease uh, risk, uh, decreased risk for women, so 26%. So it's 20% for men, 26% for women for risk of death by drinking coffee. So there's a whole bunch of reasons right there why you need to stop by your local Dunkin' Donuts in Torrington, Torrington, Connecticut, right down. But anywhere, any cup of coffee, a um, bunch of reasons why you should be drinking some coffee. So go ahead, have your cup of coffee in the morning, maybe two or three, um, and see if it doesn't help your, your health. So there's coffee. So now we're going to talk just quickly about vegetarians because we've talked about nutrition before and longevity. So um, certainly, just proven again in a recent report, one of the largest studies of vegetarians and vegans to date, those people in a plant-based diet appear to have a significantly longer life expectancy. Vegetarians live on average almost eight years longer than the general population. Eight years. And that is similar to the gap between smokers and non-smokers, believe it or not. Eight years. If you're a non-smoker, you have a tendency to live eight years longer than, than the smoker does. That's a long time. So, you know, if you don't want to completely go vegetarian, but you want to try to start to slide towards that a little bit, make sure you get your grains, your fruits, your vegetables, fish. Um, if you're going to go vegan, get rid of all those animal products completely. It may help you live longer. And the reason for this is that that type of nutrition helps prevent disease. It, it just it's proven that it helps prevent diseases like heart disease, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, kidney failure, and actually it helps prevent suicide. So kick in your vegetarian diet, wash it down with a cup of coffee, and you might live a little bit longer. Oh, well, it's just so full of tidbits here, aren't we? And then finally, today, National Cookie Day. Anybody who knows me knows that I am a cookie lover. I've always loved cookies. I love cookies more than cake, more than ice cream, really more than candy. If you have cookies on the table, that's what I would choose. So I thought that what I would do for you is I spent my Sunday, not all of it, but part of my Sunday, in and out watching the games, um, baking five healthier cookies. And the ingredients in these cookies are ingredients that will help you towards longevity. So I actually have samples here. I brought in some samples. And you're welcome to stop by the, the um, facility here and try out some of the cookies if you'd like. There's some that I like more than others. Um, I'm not a great baker, so it could be my fault that they don't taste great. But I thought I just would give you a sampling, a little view sampling of what I have here of cookies. So the first one here, right here, is our fudgy three ingredient cookies. They look great, don't they? They actually don't taste quite as good as I thought they would taste, but they do taste good. Then we have our healthy one bowl chocolate chip cookies right here. Yep, chocolate chip cookies. Dark chocolate are the chips, the rest of the ingredients, and we will put the recipes up uh, on uh, Facebook with the podcast. Those right there are our healthy one bowl chocolate chip cookies. Then the ones that I personally like the best are our healthy no-bake unicorn cookies. Yep, healthy, no baking corn cookies. I think there's only about three ingredients in there, and they're all good. We have a banana oatmeal cookie right here. Uh, not quite my favorite, but if you like banana and oatmeal, I'm sure you're going to love it. And then finally, uh, another one that I thought was really good was the peanut butter oatmeal cookie right here. Got quite a few ingredients in it, but it tastes great, and uh, it's on the healthier side. So there's some cookies for you to try. Swing on by and grab some samples. Try them out. Got, they didn't take much time to make. I made five, so it did take a little bit of time. But one thought I would like to give you here as well. 
here at uh, Yes Fitness, we believe in having splurges in our meal plans. We don't believe in trying to be perfect with our nutrition and perfect with our diet. We can't be 100% at everything. This is impossible to 100%. And we know that studies show that you can't keep a, a reduction in calories for more than really about 16 weeks is what it is. Your body's just not gonna let you do that. Physically, mentally, it's extremely difficult. So if you don't have the time to make one of these five or some other type of healthy, delicious dessert, have a splurge. Have a regular cookie. Okay? Have a piece of cake. Have some ice cream. Put that into your nutrition plan. You'll be much more successful in maintaining the healthy body weight that you're looking for. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna binge, okay? You're gonna get that satis satisfaction of eating something sometimes, both physically and mentally. A few extra calories, turn some metabolism on just a little bit more with the thermal effect of, of digesting the foods. So don't be afraid to have a splurge here and there. Try to eat 80, 90% of the time healthy. Get two, three, four splurges in a week. And I know you'll be successful. You'll be happier. You'll feel better about yourself. And you'll get the results you're looking for. So those are the three things. That's, that's what brings coffee, vegetarian, and cookies together. It's the national day for each one of those. I know I'm looking forward to having some cookies myself as soon as I get off the broadcast. That's all we got for you today. You can look for us again next week for more insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and better. Insight on how to live a little bit longer and um, those kind of things. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.